Hi, I'm Chase Cunningham, Dr. Cunningham, if you want to be formal. I'm the Chief Strategy Officer at Ericom Software. I'm a former forester analyst, uh, retired Navy chief, uh, and uh, do a lot of zero trust work. So that being said, um, I'm going to talk to you about how not to be the slow gazelle. And what do we mean by that? Well, when we're talking about the cybersecurity, and we'll get into this, a lot of folks have got this idea around how to have a perfect defense, how to never get hacked, how to not have a compromise occur. That's pretty much the wrong approach. Um, we have to think about the space differently. We have to deal with the realities of the threat and the issues that we actually have to deal with. And we have to have an understanding of the most fundamental things in the space that we need to, to fix. We're gonna go into that. And I, I am a big fan of like pop culture and animals and movies and whatever else. So this time I decided to throw in a bunch of animal sort of things. I, I think it'll be slightly different than what you're probably used to. That being said, let's talk about the reality. We wanna get into the real issues that we actually have to deal with. There's a few things you've heard about the CIA triad, confidentiality, integrity, availability, those types of things in cyber. I think that that model is still applicable but I think that actually it's changed a bit. If you really think about the risk side of this, right? The, the, the compromise side, the bad side, if you will, there's a few things that you have to deal with. In other words, uh, that, are, that are physics of the problem, right? That's not confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Those are things protection side. The bad side is you have to deal with risk, you have to deal with trust, and you have to deal with access. The good thing is if I can remove two or three or one of those, I'm exponentially increasing my survivability in the space. So let's think about this for a second. Risk is inherent. I honestly am not a fan of trying to calculate risk. I don't think it makes a lot of sense to spend a lot of trying time to reduce risk based on some quantification. Risk is inherent in this space because it's an inherently risky space. Cyberspace was declared a war fighting domain by the US government in 2010. That's 12 years ago. It's a risky place to be. And I'll talk about the risk in a second. Trust is also always going to be present in systems. I'm a zero trust guy. You're never gonna get to zero trust, just like a bodybuilder can never get to zero body fat because they'll die. You're trying to get to manageable levels of trust. Trust is something that will continue to be present in systems, but trust is something that you should focus on removing, especially from default connections and those types of things. And then lastly, if you really think about this, what does the adversary need to be successful? They need access. What do we need just to do our jobs? We need access to stuff. The bad guys want to be us, or we might even be the bad guys, but we need access to be malicious. If we can remove or reduce any of those things, exponentially reduce trust levels, exponentially reduce risk or exponentially reduce excessive access, we are inherently making our position more tenable. Our survivability in this inherently dangerous space increases. Now, if we think about this, I was trying to go through the side of, do I do a bunch of like pop culture memes and movie things or whatever else? I was like, well, let's talk about the animal's kingdom because I think that this is pretty cool too. And I found this quote, every morning in Africa, a gazelle wakes up. It knows it must run faster than the fastest lion or it will be killed. It's not gonna make it. Every morning a lion wakes up and it knows it's gotta outrun the slowest gazelle or it's gonna starve. Doesn't matter whether you're a lion or a gazelle, when the sun comes up, you better be running. Pretty interesting quote. I think that's a very real thing that we have to deal with. It's not about necessarily being the best or never having a bad thing happen. The gazelle's gonna get eaten, lion's gonna find prey, that type of thing. It's really about understanding the realities of the space and dealing with the inherent threat environment that you're operating in. The last piece of this that's interesting to me is that you have a pretty binary choice. In an inherently risky and inherently dangerous environment, your choice boils down to one of two things. You can either operate as predator or you can operate as prey. Think about that. If you're defending the system, you typically would think you're in sort of a prey scenario. Well, I don't want to be prey. I'm not comfortable with being a prey animal. I want to be predator. I want to be the predatory entity within that environment. The bad guys, when they come in, they're the predator. But once they're in my network, even if they're trusted within my system, 
If I flip the script, I make them become prey. I'm the predator. The way that I do that is by focusing on ways that I can reduce their ability to be present in that system and keep them on the defensive. If you accept that you're operating an inherently dangerous, risky environment where trust is a vulnerability, access is necessary for the adversary, and you can never get to zero risk, you can really start to change the game in your favor. Be the lion, don't be the slow gazelle. We have to think about the facts that help drive these decisions though. Some of the facts in this space are that malicious insiders actually are some of the most risky individuals within a system. What do malicious insiders actually have that is so risky? They have trust levels and they have access. Malicious insiders cause 26% or 1,700 roughly incidents at an average cost of $600,000 per incident. Pretty staggering when you think about that. Now, malicious insiders, typically you would think those are malevolent, right? Those are individuals who are going to go after a system because they're doing something bad. They want to act in a predatory manner. They're looking for easy prey within that, that context. A malicious insider is anyone inside of a system doing something outside the bounds of what they should be doing in normal practices. If they're slinking through the grass and they're trying to find a prey animal, they're a malicious insider. They're going to cause significant damage. Why? When you look at the level of damage that they cause, 26%, $600,000, most incidents in total are only about 4 million, roughly. So this is a quarter of that almost. Why is that so expensive? Because of the levels of trust and access that those malicious insiders are provided. Think about it. Think about the people inside of a system that have access, that can invoke PowerShell, that can stick a USB into a system, that can take a file and put it inside of a Google Drive or take a file and throw it off into something else and walk away with it digitally. Malicious insiders, they're the predatory animal that's in the grass, slinking around, looking for things. And if they came in from another system, they could possibly be even more malicious or malevolent. It's inherently risky to allow insiders to operate in a system in an unprotected manner. Since 2016, five-ish years ago, it's become far more costly to respond to an insider threat incident as shown in this figure, which I don't have the figure with me, but monitoring and surveillance and escalation have increased. The average annual cost increase is also going up. So what's this, the actual value that we get out of this? We're not focusing on the right things in most instances. You can see the data, the statistics say that we're trying to look at more stuff, but we're not focusing on where the adversaries are acting in a predatory manner. And we're not really focusing on the telemetry and the data and the motivations and the indications of predatory activities within a system. We're looking at the predators in the zoo and we're saying, oh, that looks like a lion. It's potentially bad. But we're not really thinking about if that thing wasn't behind the cage, it could kill me. If these numbers are getting bigger, that means people have more access. That means they have more trust. That means they're given more ability to act in a risky manner inside of a system. If you don't focus on removing those things, you are enabling predatory activity. And the adversaries know this. They continue to work their way inside of the system and let you think that nothing bad is going to go on. And they're hiding below the noise because you're looking for the wrong things and you're not trying to remove the fundamental things that they need to be successful. And they'll come get you on the backside. Your system probably you think looks like this, your, in, your enterprise IT system, your perimeter-based model of security, et cetera. You see that there are lions in there. Hopefully you can see that you have them somewhat contained, you know, where they're supposed to be, you know, the times of day they kind of come and go, you know, when they eat, you know, what they eat, you know, they're, the way that they act, those types of things. This is how your system hopefully looks in some reality. It's probably, not quite this localized. This is micro segmentation. This is isolation. This is control. This is removing the ability for this predator to do things that are risky. They can't go anywhere that they shouldn't go. I'm controlling their ability to move in and out. I'm removing their trust. I don't trust that these things won't eat me if they get free. 
and I'm removing their access to stuff that they shouldn't have access to. They can't get to the folks in the park. Ever seen Jurassic Park? When the dinosaurs get out, the access level is kind of a bad thing. We want to look like this, but most systems actually look a lot more like this. Serengeti, they're wide open. And you're hoping that you can kind of see where those predators might be lying in the grass, especially when we're thinking about insiders, the folks that we have given access and trust, and they're operating in an inherently risky environment because it's wide open like this and it's connected out to the planes, the internet. They're just sitting right there in the grass waiting for something to occur. We've essentially enabled this activity because we're not looking at the realities of the problem and focusing on the things that we know would eliminate their ability to act in a predatory manner. They're in the grass. Or in other instances, it's even worse than that. They're inside of the house with us. Now, I don't know who this individual is, but obviously they're brave or hopefully they have a really good relationship with this giant cat. But this is probably what most systems actually look like. The Serengeti is honestly something where at least you have a chance of running. But here, this individual has brought, a, I would think, multi-hundred pound, eight foot long line into his home and is thinking that this thing isn't eventually going to figure out that you're kind of soft and squishy and full of meat. And if I don't get what I want, I can eat you. That's what we're typically dealing with. Honestly, it would be great if it was this clear to us that this is the predatory space in which we put ourselves. But most folks don't deal with that reality. There is an inherent level of trust provided to this line. This individual has said, welcome into my home, welcome into my system, do what you want. He probably walks, I, I would guess there's a giant litter box with giant lion turds in it somewhere. This lion is doing whatever it wants. The trust here is extremely high. The access is also excessively high. There's less than 18 inches, two feet between this individual and that killer cat. Not cool, not safe. The risk level is through the roof. Why? Because this individual has chosen to provide this animal, this predator, with excessive levels of trust and access. The risk is exponentially high. If this was flipped, if they had put the adversary, the lion, back where it was supposed to be, or at least safer, inside of that cage, inside of that segmented environment where they can see what's going on, control levels of access, minimize the trust, and reduce the risk, things get better. I don't think this individual is going to live a long life personally, um, but it probably won't go well for them because eventually the lion's going to figure out, well, you're just as good as a taco. The motivations for this stuff are still pretty clear. Insider threat actors, the folks that we actually need to focus on, the people that have the excessive levels of access and trust and can do things that exponentially increase our risk are understood. We know who the predators are. And a lot of times they don't even know that they are the predators. They have the capability to let their claws out, their fangs out because of the levels of access and trust we provided them. Privileged IT users. Can you invoke PowerShell on your machine right now? That's a risky behavior. It provides you with excessive levels of trust and access. Managers who can access sensitive information. Are you monitoring those individuals? Do you know what they're doing, where they're going, the things their type of access or the things that they are accessing and using? Contractors, third parties. Statistically speaking, and this is recent data, about 70% of breaches occur with a contractor or third party. You might have a really good zoo. You might have your predators in place. But guess what? When you connect to someone else, you are opening yourself up to their Serengeti. You don't know where their predators lie. You don't know what's below the grass. And then employees. Employees become malicious insiders because they are operating in that risky space. They are provided excessive levels of trust and access, and it goes really bad. They become a lion, kind of whether they like it or not. They are forced to become a predator when they are compromised and when someone uses their access to do malicious or malevolent things. And they're trusted and they have access. The motivations for this stuff are still well understood. We know what motivates a predator to do predatory things. In the wild, it's because they want to eat. In the cyber world, it's because of these particular resources that are necessary for them to continue to drive those motivations. Fraud, monetary gain, and IP theft. We don't have to solve for something that we don't understand. We're not looking for why would a lion eat a person? 
We're not trying to understand why would a crocodile hide and wait, those types of things. We know what's going on. The predators have shown us for 30, 40 years why they do these types of activities. But we continue to provide those individuals that are acting in manners that are indicative of risk, excessive levels of trust and access. In other words, if you're seeing the predators in the system indicate that they have a, uh, a leaning towards doing something to get monetary gain or to grow IP theft or to, to access things they shouldn't get, fraudulent activities, you should remove that predator from their free roam around a system. Otherwise, they're going to get you. That predator is waiting in the grass. They're hiding in the weeds within the system hoping that you're not paying attention so that when you turn your back, that's when they come get you. And again, it may not be necessarily that they are openly malevolent. They might just be enabling malevolent activity. They might not be the predator. They might be pointing you towards a predator. And this stuff is inevitable. I mean, it's going to happen. We're going to continue to have these problems. We've tried to solve for these things uh, the wrong way for a long time, and it doesn't get any better. I did have to throw one pop culture meme here because it wouldn't be a good session if I didn't, and Thanos is one of my favorites. So there's an inevitability. If we look at the things we've tried, they indicate that we haven't actually solved the problem. Right? People will say, well, why does this continue to occur? Employees are not fully trained to understand and apply laws, mandates, or regulatory requirements related to their work. We get training. We've trained people for years. There are billion dollar companies out there right now that train people not to do bad things. Bad stuff still happens. Why? Trust, access, and risk in that combination. Employees are unaware of the steps they should take at all times. Companies should BYOD, blah, blah, blah. You don't have the ability to push all those controls to my machine. It's my machine. You have to have another capability that's going to sit between me and your network. You can't train me to keep my machine secure to help your organization's infrastructure be secure. It doesn't work that way. Employees are sending out highly confidential information uh, to the cloud. If you're not monitoring the cloud, you are giving me excessive levels of trust that I won't take that information that's proprietary to you and go put it in some cloud resource and use it for something later. Statistically speaking, most people also think when they do something or create something for a business, they own it. It's my data. I worked on that project. Why shouldn't I take it and put it in my G drive? If you are enabling them to do that, you are allowing them to act in a predatory manner. You're telling the lion that it can do what it wants, which is not a good thing to do with a lion. Employees break organization security policies to simplify tasks. Security can be cumbersome. If something is cumbersome, what is the first thing someone does? They try and get away from it. If you put a chain around the lion's neck, what does the lion want to do with the chain? Isn't it better to put the, the lion inside of an enclosure if you're trying to protect that environment and make it happy, just let it do its thing, but remove the trust and access which reduces your risk? That's what you want. The users can be that way as well. Employees expose organizations to risk if they do not keep devices and services patched and upgraded. If you are counting on your employees to patch and manage and maintain their own devices, you are waiting for a predatory reaction. You are waiting for a bad thing to happen. That lion is in wait. It's going to rip your throat out. Look at your iPhone or your Android phone or your Windows or your MacBook right now and see when's the last time it was updated. Now think about the scale of that inside of an organization. The adversaries that are out there on the Serengeti, on the actual internet, the really, really malicious side of this thing, they're looking for unpatched access. They're waiting, they're lying in wait in the weeds, hoping that you're not paying attention, you're not patching your stuff. Don't rely on your employees to be IT administrators and take care of their systems. You're operating in a BYOD world. It is inherently risky. You have to live that way, but remove their ability to do things based on trust and access. Keep the predators at bay, or at the very least, have good understanding of where the predators are and what they're trying to do and cognizance of their activities. They're hiding, they're right there, right? I mean, this is a great slide because you don't really notice 
how easy it is to hide when you're good at what you're doing. In this first slide, you probably can't see the crocodile. This is what we're thinking about when we're thinking about malicious act, malicious insiders that are really malevolent, that are trying to stay below the noise floor, that are acting in a very extremely predatory ma manner and are looking for you to be the prey. You can't see them. They're there, they're practiced, they know what they're doing. You're not going to know until it's too late. They might be feet away from you, digitally speaking. They're just waiting for you to let your guard down, for you not to look and notice that something is off. And then is when they spring, right? That's when they attack. This is actually pretty scary because that crocodile looks a lot like that log and that's really clear water. This actually came from something I found on the internet where the person was about to jump in this uh, river and go swimming in Australia, which in Australia, everything's trying to kill you anyway. But here is a great uh, corollary between what you should think about when you're thinking about insider activity and paying attention to what's going on around you, looking for those ripples, being aware and cognizant of the inherently risky environment that you were operating in and knowing that there's something out there trying to get at you. There is. If you are doing business digitally, there is some sort of malevolent activity coming after you. You likely have an insider threat problem. You likely have an insider risk because of the fact that you have provided or are enabling excessive levels of access and trust. A negligent insider is the root cause of most incidents, right? So this is the negligent person who doesn't really know what they're doing. They become the predator without meaning to be the predator. They're just doing something on a system. They get compromised. Someone gets their creds and uses their levels of what? Trust and access and goes further into a system and becomes predatory. This is a, a gazelle running around and it runs across a lion and the lion somehow trains them or takes them and gives them talons and says, now you're going to work for us. This is where we go wrong. If we continue to trust that people won't be put into that place, we are enabling predatory activity. The more access they have, the more trust we provide them, the more risky their behavior likely can become or the more risky their activities will be. You're letting that gazelle operate as a predator. And then you have to deal with lions and gazelles that are trying to kill you. Not a good place to be. This is about business. This is not about cyber. Statistically speaking, insider risk, insider threat, things that happen within the context of these predatory activities and systems based on risk, trust, and access cause a business disruption. You will see a 23% degradation in your ability to deliver customers to services to customers if you have an activity like this take place, can you afford to lose a quarter of your business continuity, capability, delivery, et cetera, because you allow a predatory activity to continue? 21% of the technology is going to be leveraged uh, maliciously, depending on what's going on. A quarter of everything in your business could potentially be affected if you continue to remove or continue to allow predatory activities to occur. The bad guys are waiting for this. They're sitting there in the weeds, hoping that you're not paying attention. Ultimately, situational awareness is really the key and core, most important principle in all this. How do you know that? Well, you don't want to be like this individual who obviously wasn't paying attention and is going out there to do you know, nature's work. and doesn't see the lioness hiding in the grass. You need to know what's going on. Back to the thing I showed with the crocodile in the water, those types. The predators are there, we're aware, but we need to have a good ability to see what's going on. We have to have context to understand the reality of the activity that's taking place. Then we need to be able to apply a control that will keep us safer. You know, what are you gonna do with, in this particular scenario? Probably not gonna work out well for you. If you're focusing on anything that you need to, to enable, and the way that you approach the problem differently, it's not confidentiality, integrity, and availability. It's these three things. Reduce your risk by reducing the levels of trust and reducing the level of access for a particular user or particular malevolent activity or predatory entity, et cetera, et cetera. If you can reduce trust relationships and you can reduce levels of access within systems, you reduce risk, therefore you become more safe and more secure. 
If you don't reduce those things and you don't work to enable that type of activity, strategically speaking, over time, you're continuing to operate in the Serengeti model. And you are going to become the slow gazelle because eventually a bigger, badder predator will find a way to come out of the weeds and get to you. In other words, we don't want to be like these individuals. You see the crocodile? It's right there. They have really bad situation awareness. They're not aware of the risk that is present. They just think I'm going to get this water. They have they provided an excessive level of trust that I think this is safe. I know that I've been to this watering hole before. Everything looks relatively okay. And the access that's been provided to that crocodile is a few feet. If you're operating this manner, you're ignoring the reality of the space. You're increasing the levels of risk because there's excessive trust and you provided access to that predator. If you don't deal with those things, you continue to operate in a manner that is inherently threatening to your business, to your person, to your family, to all these things that are digitally connected. Don't be the slow gazelle. Be the predator. Flip the script. This is what you want to do. This is the better way to approach the problem. I appreciate your time. Hopefully you enjoyed some of the memes and relationships and sort of the stuff I was talking about in reference to. If you need some help and I can be of assistance to you, please reach out to me. You can find me easily on Twitter and LinkedIn.